Father, Lord, if we just gathered here, we could talk about the events of the day, and we could talk about the things we think, but Lord, we're not here for that. We're here to lift up your name, to worship you, Lord, and to learn of you. And we pray tonight that you'll meet us right here. We have your word on it. We come in your name, Lord. So may, Lord, as we tell of your greatness, and may as we sing the songs and lift up your holy name, may you come, Lord, with your great anointing amongst us and lift our spirits, Lord, and revive us, Lord God, and meet us in a special way this night. May you heal every sick that's amongst us, remove every doubt, every sound of unbelief, May, Lord, your spirit prevail here tonight, and I pray that our approach would be pleasing unto you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Come here.
we have some singers right over here in that little group of kids right there. One of these days. <laughs>
sing the verse right, but I'll tell you, the words are good. Amen. The words are good. So, Amen. Brother Gary, you probably knew that. You being the old timer, you probably could have sung that for us. But I remember hearing Sister Mary Dalton sing that, and it was really a blessing. It really was. But the message is true. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Amen. Amen. You know, He knows just how to do it. Right. Let's uh, let's ask our brothers to come. We'll take the offering up, and we'll do a couple things here tonight. I I want to remember some uh, a family of some old friends up in North Arkansas. Sister uh, Sister Ward, Jean Ward, passed away today, and. Many, many years ago, for you all that know them, used to work with Brother Finus a little bit. Brother Earl, I bet he's been gone 40, 45 years. I don't know how long he's been gone, but he's with me back in Wardell. Old soldier. And you know, Brother Finus, what I remember about him, just being real young, he was right there to help whatever he could do to help Brother Earl, help the services. And then uh, his precious wife, real quiet spoken, I guess she was probably near 90 years old, but I thought of the song, one by one, we gained the poor. One by one, they crossed the river. So she had passed away this morning, so I wanted the people to remember her in prayer, and, or, or her family, and uh, thank you to Brother Danny Ward, Timmy Ward, the family there. Uh, Sister Kenny had fell yesterday, I guess. Yeah, she's sore from, I mean, she can still be around, but she's pretty sore. Well, let's hold her up before the Lord. These, these older soldiers, they need prayer. Mm -hmm. And Sister Connie, I went by to see her yesterday, and oh, they don't give her that much good news. But you know, she was smiling, and I got to thinking about Sister Connie. You know, the Lord called on Sister Connie many years ago. Mm -hmm. Called on her to go with the tent. And he called on her to sing. Yep. He said, yeah. you sing that. You get up and sing that you came on business for the king. Amen. Amen. And you know what she done? She done what the Lord called her to do. Amen. What a testimony. Amen. What a testimony she leaves. So, you know, let's hold her up in prayer. Brother Jeff, you got a prayer request? Brother, Brother Marty McComas. Brother Marty. He left a, a message on, on, on Facebook. Facebook. He's, he's got cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just pray for them at this time. Absolutely. Amen. Known Brother Marty a long time. My, he was he was just getting started out preaching when I was just a little boy. Yeah. So let's just pray that God will be with them and help them because they're they they definitely need the Lord also. Anybody got any special needs tonight they want to make mention? Think about our sister churches down in Jamaica, down in San Antonio, up in Boston. All around, these that share the same vision we do, even those that don't, we're in a needy hour, huh? Amen. <clears throat> brother Gary, or why don't you stand and pray over the request tonight, brother, and, and uh, over the offering, would you? Amen. <clears throat> Dear gracious Lord, we truly are a needy people. But you said in your word, every need you would supply. And what this man, these petitions, Bless the time and the offering tonight for the furtherment of the kingdom. Yes, Lord. And we'll give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus Christ's name. Yes. Amen. 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 Let's sing a little chorus as we take up the offering. <clears throat> Let's sing, I'm a child of the king and I know that I am. Yes. Yes. Remember that, Brother Paul? I'm a child of the king. Yes, I am. I'm a child of the King. Oh, I know that I am. belong to my Lord. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm a child of the King. Yes, I am. Oh, I'm a child of the King. Yes, I am. Oh, I know that I am. I'm a child of the king. Yes, I am. I know that I am. I belong to my Lord. 
And you know, there's nothing I would want to see greater than for my family to be a witness and to recognize what God's doing in this day. And so they've been here visiting and we've had a great time. There's a lot of love amongst our siblings. And you know, you can only talk about the birds and the weather so long before you move over and start talking about the things the Lord's doing. And of course, people get a little, they get their guard up. They get their guard up. I was thinking about Brother Earl made a statement today that a sister had testified that the spirit that's in the land going through the message believers is, is these preachers are getting up trying to undermine Brother Branham. And why would the preacher stand up and say anything when you got the tapes? So much that it's caused a bitterness to rise up against the preachers because they're trying to proclaim that God still has a five-fold ministry going on. And these people that their friends, family, all kinds of things that are listening to these tapes and they're like, why would you just not hear it straight from the horse's mouth, straight from the prophet? We got the tapes. Why do you need a preacher? It sounds real good. They make a compelling argument. It sounds real good, but that ain't God's way. That ain't God's way. That ain't what the prophet said. Y'all know that. But you know, I've seen that. And then my family comes, and some of them are tape listeners, and I love them very much. Others... Don't go to church at all. I still love them very much. And everybody's got an opinion. So I begin to say, well, you know, what really matters, the only way I can say this is because this is what the pastor says. What really matters is what God's doing in your day. Can you see what God's doing in your day? Amen. Everybody, and I begin to use the analogy that we go to Branson and we all sit down in the theater and there's 2,500 people and they put the movie of Noah on Every one of those 2,500 people believed the story of Noah. Right. But when Noah's message came forth, he couldn't get not one to believe it other than the designated family that the Lord had told him would, be, would receive it. Not one other person. So I began to say, you know, we recognize what God done in another day. We always recognize. We can look back, we can see it, we can see what God done. We can look ahead and we can see what God's going to do. It's promised, we believe it, we can talk of what God's going to do. And that began the conversation. And I said, but what about what He's doing right now? Man. And they spoke up and said, God's working all around the world. I said, I believe that. He's working all around the world. People are praying. God's hearing the prayers and answering the prayers. I said, I believe that. I said, but God Almighty is working a little different here. He's telling what He's going to do, when He's going to do it, and then He's bringing it to pass. Amen. Right. That's right. I said, if you know that's going on somewhere, let you and I get together and go see it. Because I want to see it. They would be part of us, you know? Mm -hmm. So we kept going back and forth and back and forth and some good, healthy discussion. But before long, it got little intense. Mm -hmm. Got a little intense. Take so the meeting was adjourned about 11, 11.30 at night. And they went upstairs and I went to my room and I'm kind of just, you know, I want my family to believe. We all do. So I sat down in my chair and I'm sitting there and I'm kind of sulking and Lord. You know, just kind of milling over these things and kind of talking to the Lord and thinking about it. You know, what can I do? I can't give nobody I say. I can, I can try to explain it. I can lay it out. But if the Lord don't show you, you just won't see it. Now, it you know that's the way it is. Amen. So I, I prayed. I went on to bed later, laying there. Couldn't go to sleep. And, so the next morning I'm up and I commit them to the Lord and I go off to work. A little after 8 o'clock, I get a message from our sister over in Tennessee. And she gives me this message. The Lord, I was in prayer a few moments ago and the Lord called your name. Here's what he had to say. 
I see the brokenness of the heart. I see the family. I see you sitting in your chair praying to me. Amen. Saints, that was eight hours before the message was given. You tell me God is not listening. Amen. You tell me God doesn't know what you're thinking. You tell me God is not aware of your conversation. Amen. He's all over it. Then he reminded me, he said, don't get discouraged, I'll lift you up. He said, don't lose sight of what I've called you for. And I thought, Lord, I'm so unworthy. But you know what? I don't have no better sense than to believe it. Amen. And I just went through the day rejoicing and sharing with different ones. And you know what? God will be merciful to them. I know he will. He said, I've given you promises. I cling to those promises. He, but you know, he's called you and I for something special. Amen. He's called us for this hour that he might use us as his ambassadors. Brother Evan, I get him to come up here a little bit. But you know, I listened to a message that he had preached a year or two ago. and He preached about being an ambassador from another country. I think he used Jamaica as the illustration and how that you would you'd be from another country and, and God and the, the people would send you there to represent them, you know. And uh, maybe he'll maybe he'll share some of that with us. But we're ambassadors for the great king. Amen. We've been invited to the supper. We have a chair with our name on it. We got promises laid up. Lift your chins up, saints. We have everything to move forward for. We're the most blessed people. Highly favored among all mankind. And, uh, you know, people's not going to understand us. They're not going to understand us. Because we're, we're, we're led, we're from another country. We're, we're listening to a different voice. Amen. And, uh, you know, you just, you just got to walk real humble and, and show the love of Jesus Christ and pray. <laughs> And you can't get discouraged when they say, hey, you know, you guys are just trying to... Then they told Brother Earl, you're trying to make yourself something. You're trying to raise yourself up. That ain't it. That ain't it at all. Brother Earl ain't trying to raise himself up. You know what I notice? The more that the Holy Spirit comes around, the more that God pours out His Spirit, the more prayer, guess what? It turns you into a humble Wilted, <laughs> melted heart. Amen. You're not loud. You're not loud and proud and boastful and this and that. No. Humble, the Holy Spirit brings a humility that you know that it's not you. You was chosen. You didn't have anything to do with it. Amen. But now we have something to do with it. We're to claim it and walk forward. So let's all stand, sing a little course of amazing grace, and ask Brother Edmund to come up. Whatever's on his heart, we we ain't no hurry, but I just wanted to share that with you. That's that's what the Lord did today. Yesterday. Amen. Amazing grace.
so they want to come down and check, check, out, check it out. And the youth, in particular, want to come down and check it out. So while they're down there, so we like to, you know, keep them busy. So have them see a few things around this area. So. So we're taking that, um, you know, a team for a mic, a mat, those guys, a big plan. Yeah, I'm creep, so we're probably going to take them. Go fishing, you know, maybe. Did they do anything since it's yeah, learning? Probably they can teach them how to shoot or you know, uh, do a few things, you know, for a couple of days, two or three days, something like that. Major, so they can enjoy themselves because they're from the city. So they, up in the city, you, you don't have time to do those things. So just play on your phone, and you know, and you're, the only hunting you can do is on your phone or your computer. <laughs> so when they come here, they can find the real hunting, the real you know game, the real thing. They can put their phone down. And your, you know, life. So we're thinking about doing that. So in July, I believe you guys out of school in June, so July, so I think we're a good time. So you guys can have a good time. And our house has a pretty big yard, so we can have some nice fellowship singing. And I think Matt also has a big yard also, so we can go up there and have some nice fellowship bonfire and singing. Okay. I don't know if Philip would be around, but if you remember back in the days when Philip was a young guy, he used to go up to Boston, he knows how we used to do it. So, you know, we can do the same thing. So, and, um, so that's why I wanted to, <coughs> what I wanted me to share with you about um, what we have in our hearts, you know, because we come down here, just to have fellowship and you know, just to keep the fire burning. Amen. You, know, you know, when you have a fire burning, you add more wood into the fire, you just add more fire. So that's what we come to do. So we just wanna, we just come down to add more wood in the fire. Amen. That's all. So you might have other ideas, but this is my idea. Just Amen. add more wood in the fire. That's what I've been saying all the time. <clears throat> God has come down. Amen. 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 You guys believe that? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. He said, God has come down. Yes. Well, <clears throat> so, now if you believe that, the question is, when did God come down? Did he come down yesterday, last month, five years ago? When did he come down? God has come down. That's a big controversy in the message. I don't know if you know that. Many people say God had come down. Mm -hmm. Man. Some people said he came down in 1963. Yeah. You didn't know that, did you? Oh, yeah. yeah. What happened to the word people? People are not looking for a word here. I don't see them tonight. See? Wow. So that's a big thing. But I said, God has come down. And people say they're looking for a word. <clears throat> He's giving you a word. They're not, they're not even here. Right. If I was looking for work, and but I said, God has come down, and I'm looking for work, I would be asking him that question. When did he come down, brother? Amen. Are you here with me tonight? Yeah. Or are you sleeping? <laughs> I'm trying to help you out here. Because some people say they're looking for work. So if he said, God has come down, he's always been saying this, and then you said, he's not giving you work. This is a question for you to ask him. When did God come down, brother? Because we're looking for a word. Because what the Bible said, the perfect has come. Amen. There is no more partial understanding no more. Amen. Are you here with me? So that's been, if the perfect has come, no one shall understand him. So what we're waiting for? Amen. So the question is, 
Sir, is it the time for the manifestation of the sons of God? Amen. 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 Brother Mike sent me a quote on the adoption. In the adoption, Brother Branham was waiting for a manifestation. He was waiting for something to happen. Amen. And the seals, he was no longer waiting. He said, the seven seals is the end of all certain nature. And the adoption, he was waiting. Are you there with me? Amen. I need to go back and read the book again. Amen. And the seal, he said, the seven seals are broken. The mysteries are revealed. Down come the angel for this coming. Amen. The angel has come down. Amen. And the rapture message, he said, those three things will happen, the shock, the voice, and the trumpet, when Christ will be coming down. Is that right, he said, what I said? Right. Did he say when did Christ come, come went back up? No. So God has come down. The Bible said the Holy Spirit came down when? And they are Pentecost. Is that right? Amen. Did he say when he, when he went back up? No. No way. Have you dealt with me? So God has come down. The Holy Spirit is what? He's God. Amen. So God has come down. So the question is, he said in the book, in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, the day that you hear his voice, do not harden it. Your heart. Amen. So God has come down. Do you see him? Do you know him? That depends on who he has been revealed to you. Amen. God has come down, but you probably don't see him. Probably he's not revealed to you yet. And that's what happened to a lot of people around here. God has come down, but he's not revealed to them yet. So because of that, they have problems. They don't see that God. They don't see the revelation. Because they don't see the revelation, they're talking all kinds of stuff. Amen. And that's why I'm saying this tonight, just to help you out. Because on Sunday night, we spoke about the God and man. And all is all about revelation, church. Amen. It has to be revealed to you. Amen. Amen. If he's not revealed to you, it becomes just another story. It becomes just another book. It becomes another sermon. But when it's revealed to you, it's a whole different thing. It's between you and God. Amen. God has come down. When he revealed to you, you know who you are. That's right. Now you represent him on this earth. I remember when I came to Boston and he said this to me. He said, do you know, people all said this, speak the word, speak the word. He said, you cannot speak the word if he has not yet revealed it to you. That's right. Amen. Ooh, that's good. He has to reveal it to you first before he speak it. Amen. And there are a lot of people that love that to say, well, what am I said, we'll, we'll reach the time where we can speak the word. But if you cannot receive a revelation, how can you speak the word? Amen. That's right. Amen. You never thought of that? Right. Come on, brother. That's right. That's the truth. Amen. So I, I would say this first. Before you speak the word, you must be able to catch a revelation. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, if you can catch a revelation, now you can speak the word. I think that would be the process. Catch the revelation, now speak the word. Now, if you cannot catch the revelation, how can you speak the word? That's right. right. And that's the problem. People are trying to put the cut before the horse. They don't want to receive a revelation, and they want to speak the word. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Yeah. And that's what happened with people. That's why I was talking to Brother Mike. That's what happened to people. They're leaving the church. They said that we're not getting nothing here. There's nothing going on here. How come when you leave the church, you become worse? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. How come when you leave the church, you get you get yourself in a worse condition than you had to before? Mm -hmm. 
You are here, you are struggling. But when you leave the church, the presence of God, you are in a worse condition than when you were here. Amen. That's when there's something wrong. That's when at least when you are here, you are getting something. Amen. That was keeping you above water. Come on. But you don't get it. And that's why <laughs> what I'm saying, people do not realize that. God sent the man of God with his word to help you. Amen. If you catch the revelation, you understand that his purpose. You understand that God has come down and he has given gifts yes, to his bride. That's, that's how it works. Remember Rebecca? Remember Isaac? When Eliezer came down, yeah. he gave what? Gift. Amen. The gift right here. And when Rebecca was going to meet Isaac, she covered her face. She knew Isaac was, she knew who Isaac was. She saw that man know what's coming. She told Eliza, that's him. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, man. You got it, Mike? Right. <laughs> she, she knew that was Isaac. Uh, how did she know that? Something in her. The deep calls to the deep. Amen. Amen. She covered her face. She said, that's him. Amen. She never met Isaac before. But something in her said, you know what? This man that's coming, that's your husband. Amen. That's the groom. And I believe the bride know who her husband is. Amen. She's, the Bible said the bride had made herself ready. And we are getting herself ready by revelation. Amen. Amen. By revelation. Amen. Yeah. Because this message has the secret in it. That's right. And all those secrets has been revealed to us by revelation. Amen. That's, why the whole, that's why the angels are here. Angels are here. Right. The gifts are angels. Mm -hmm. they, they're here. Amen. People do not want it in the church. That's their problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we want them. Amen. Amen. Yes, we do. They're here to get, us, get up, to get us ready to bring that faith in maturity. Amen. I would say this to finish. You know, Jesus Christ said, when Lazarus passed, the Bible said he kept walking. Three days, he kept working. And then on the fourth day, he told his disciples, let's go wait, Lazarus. But the one I'm saying, he was waiting for the Father to tell him when to go. I don't know if you get the revelation right here. He said, I do nothing except what the Holy Spirit tells me. If we are a son and daughter of God, church, wouldn't it be the same thing? Amen. Wouldn't it be the same thing, yes, it would. Philip? Yeah. Wouldn't it be the same thing for you to say, well, I mean, I'll do nothing except what the Holy Spirit tells me. There you go. Amen. I think so, Philip. Yeah. I think it would be the same thing for you to say, because you're a son of God, the Bible says the footprint of a son of God is ordered by the Holy Ghost. That's right. So therefore, you'll do nothing except what the Holy Spirit tells you. You'll be the same thing. Right. So why people don't want that? They don't want to be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you said I'm being led by the Holy Spirit, they don't like. They don't like that. If the church said it's being led by the Holy Ghost, they don't like that. I think it's a common thing. It's a normal thing for a church to be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. And I think that's where we're at right now. The church needs to get back and let itself be ruled by the Holy Spirit. And we'll get we'll get in that in that level where the love of God will be so much in the church. And people will have so much love. Amen. Forget about all this bitterness that's going on. Right. Let the love of God reign. Yes. When that love keeps raining in our hearts for one another and remove that bitterness. Yeah. Because there, there's a big conflict between bitterness and what? And love. Yeah. Yeah. Which one are we going to let win, church? Love. Come on. Yeah. That's what we want to win. We want love to win. But bitterness is right now, yeah, when I look at the board, the scoreboard, bitterness is a lot higher. <laughs> we need to win that game. Bring bitterness down. Yes. 
Because what about said, love, if we have love in our church, our church should be more successful. Yes, That's right. Amen. Amen. And why we don't have love? You know why? Because people are, people are looking for me. Everybody looking for, oh, I need, I need Brother West to give me love. I need Sam to give me love. I need Philip to give me love. I need Matt to give me love. That's why everybody's looking for somebody to give them love. What about me? Come here and give you love. Yep. With no string attached. You never done that? Because people will feel like, oh, that would be too much for me to come all the way from Boston, drive a thousand of miles, taking me 22 hours and 1,500 miles to come all the way from Boston and come giving you love on top of it. That would be too much for a man to do. And then he said to this, when you do it, people say, what is it that, what is it that after? What is it that this guy after? You drove up all these miles, and then you come down here, and then you still come and be nice to me. Maybe he's after to borrow some money from me. Maybe he's after something else. You know, I don't trust this guy. Because who does things like that? There's nobody that's nice. All the nice people, they're dead. Who, who, who is he? Are you there? Yeah. Yep. What we need to do, we need to start being nice. Giving love. Yes. So what you should do is say, you know what? This guy is giving love. You know what? Instead of me trying to figure out why he's doing this, let me give love back. Amen. Amen. Now let me try. Let me, let me help you out. Don't even try to give me love back. Mm -hmm. Give love back to somebody else. Yes. So that way you find out how this thing is going to work. Because I believe we need to give love with one another. When we start giving love with one another here, we're going to find out that love is going to be transparent. Are you there with me? Because when we start giving love with one another, you, you will give me love without knowing. You know why? Because you give, you give so much love. Amen. And then I pass by you, you will give me love. So, I give this guy love. I wasn't supposed to give you love, but it's not your fault because you've been giving love. That's what you do. You give love. In other words, it becomes your habit to give love. Yes. But if you don't do that, it's going to become your habit to be to give to give what bitterness to be bitter. That's right. And I believe there are people it becomes their habit to be bitter, to be a hypocrite. It becomes their habit. They would rather be like Jesus Christ become give those Pharisees a last name. Pharisee, <coughs> hypocrite. I hate to have a last name like this. Edmund, hypocrite. Oh, my. That's a bad last name. That says, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what the hell talk about a change name? You know there's a change name that's bad too. Yeah. Pharisee, hypocrite, that's a change name. Yeah. You're just a Pharisee, but when Jesus Christ comes, you change your name, Pharisee, hypocrite. You don't want to have a change name like this. I know it's a young people meeting tonight, but I just wanted you guys to know. The youth, we're going to come down in July. We're going to have a nice get together, nice fellowship. We're going to enjoy ourselves with the youth from Boston. Just enjoy yourself. Just let love reign. What do I say? When love projects, divine grace takes over. That's right. I put it. Brother Mike said earlier, I preached that message back in Boston, and I was reading a book about how an ambassador from England, how you become an ambassador. You become an ambassador, you have to be an Englishman. You cannot be just anybody from the country that sent you to become an ambassador. You have to come from England. And you have to represent the king. So that's mean to be an ambassador for God, you have to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You have to be a son of God. Amen. You have to represent the king. Amen. The king has to have full trust in you to know that my son is going to represent me here. Amen. And you have full authority in this earth. So when you say that you are a son of God, 
You have all heaven behind you. Amen. You have no doubt, no question about your ability. Why? All heaven behind you. When you see that ambassador is in Jamaica or Barbados or Bahamas, he knows England is behind him. If something happens to this guy, England will come down. Man. He knows that. He has no doubt about it. He's speaking that authority because he knows the queen is behind him. He knows every other whole military of England is behind him. Amen. If human beings can move like this, what about our God? Amen. That's right. And that's what I was speaking that day. And I was typing this to show as a son of God. You know, when we say, when we know who we are, we know the authority that we have in God. And Jesus Christ said, go tell my brother that I'm going back to my God, who is their God. Yes. John chapter 20. We have the same God that he has. Man. We are his brother. So when we know who we are, we have the same authority. Man. The problem, whatever I'm saying, we are living under our privilege. When we reach that level, we recognize who we are. What are these seven, seven church ages? We'll be the invincible army. Amen. When the bride knows who she is. Amen. Church, let's bring that love. That love, that's what, that's what the devil, the devil knows that. And right now, everything is in the place. But he's trying to put that love. And what is the capstone again? That cap the pyramid? What is it again? Love. Oh, that's right. And what is the word said that the bride is calling? Love. love. Grace, grace, love. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. Because that's what we need. What is the zeal of the hour? Say, I'm wrong. Because that's the problem. People do not want to say, I'm sorry, brother. I'm wrong. Because the devil want to keep you holding bitterness. When you have bitterness, you can say, I'm wrong. You cannot look your brother in the face, your sister in the face, say, you know, brother, I'm wrong. I have that problem, I'm wrong. They don't, nobody wants to say I'm wrong. But I'm telling you tonight, young people, I'm saying this for you. Look, start learning to say, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. And I love you. Amen. See those words right here? Those are heavy duty words. Heavy duty words. Husband, wife, try those words. I'm wrong. I'm sorry, I love you. Amen. Let's start work. Let's work on those words. If you keep, even if your wife says, <laughs> yeah, well, right. I, I, I never used you to hear you say those words before. I happen to you. You are faking it. So don't worry. Say, you know what? I heard a sermon last night. And ever since that time, from that time, those are the words. That's, I add those words in my book. I do I'm sorry I never used them before. From now on. I'm going to be using one. I'm going to be using them. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. And I love you. Amen. Amen. Those three words, people don't use them because Satan wants to block you from your blessing. Amen. Anyone promise me they're going to be using those words? Yes. Amen. All right. Now, here's the deal. In my church, people don't promise me like that. Amen. Because I, I'm going to follow through. Now you promise me, I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to ask you this. Did it work for you? Because I want to respond. Because I'm not looking for promises like this. Oh, yes, no. I want to know when you use it, what happened. I need a feedback. Right? I need a feedback. Good and bad. I need to know. Say, but hey, you know what? I use, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I love you. This is what happened. They spit on my face. They hit me in my head. They cuss me out. I want to hear what happened. Because I know when you use the word, there's always a reaction. Yeah. It's the same thing. I gave somebody some interest age book and they told me, I, oh, I read it. I said, you lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, you lie. Because no one ever read some interest age book and they told me, oh, they read it. I'm like, no, you're going to tell me this. Man, that book, <laughs> who wrote that book? This book is crazy. Oh, that book, I put it down. Oh, that book, man, I didn't know all these things. Where did you get this book from? Who is that guy? Mm -hmm. See, I, there's a, there has to be a response. Yeah. 
So I, that's a sentence. Those words, when you say those words to anyone, kids, you use those words, you're going to get a response. I thought, you use those words, you're going to get a response. And that's what I'm saying tonight. Husband, wife, kids, going forward, you use those words, there's spirits around you. Those spirits are going to realize that, oh my God, something happened. Amen. Something happened to Samuel. Bible going to something happened with Samuel. Samuel is not the same. Josh is going to be using this word. His wife going to say, what happened to Josh? Josh is not the same. Josh is saying, I'm wrong. Josh is saying, I'm sorry. Josh is saying, I love you very often. What happened to him? This is a new man. See, those words, they have, those are action words. Mm -hmm. right. They have power behind them. And those are, and the devil do not want us to use them. So tonight, as a young people service, I want you to take this home. This is your homework. Put it to use. And I want to hear a response. Because it works. It works every time. <coughs> every time. You might say, oh, but people might laugh at you. Oh, I heard you say sorry before. I heard you say I love you before. But I'm telling you, why when people are getting married, they want to hear what I do. They say that all the time, but they want to hear it. That's right. <clears throat> because it was an action word, powerful word. May God bless you tonight. May he keep you. May he give you an understanding of what I'm trying to say. I know if the Holy Spirit comes, he will help you understand what I'm trying to say. Because I'm trying to help you to understand God has come down. He only come down when he gives you himself. To you. Amen. If he does not reveal himself to you, he ain't come down yet. But then when he given himself to you, God has come down. Amen. He came down for me. Because you know why? He given himself to me. That's why I'm here. That's why I felt compelled, church, to come down here. And I told the church in Boston, well, you guys need to come down and check it out. You need to come down here. I said, oh, what's going to happen? And why we need to come down here? We don't like down here. I said, come down. Just check it out. <coughs> Just come down here for a vacation for two weeks. Just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Just see how it is. Since I've been down here, but I'll come down and I'll come down to my house. I said, hey, but I mean, I've been coming to have breakfast with you. Is that going to be a problem to come down and have breakfast with you? I said, but El, if you don't come have breakfast with me, I'm going to have problems because you're the only one here that's coming to have breakfast with me. I don't see nobody else come have breakfast with me. <laughs> so that's me. If you don't come down and have breakfast with me, I'm going to have problems because nobody else come down. Come it's not like my house is full of people coming down. It's not like Lisa, Sharon, Steve coming down and have breakfast with me. My house is full. Nobody come down and have breakfast with me. So that's when I was the only one that come have breakfast with me. So that's me. Well, stop having her come down. Her I got problems. Man. I'm gonna have to start looking to put gas in my car just driving back to Boston. <laughs> that's when I have nobody. So thank God for what uh, coming down. Hey, our yeah. Thanks. See, that's what. That's when you when you have a pastor. Brother L <coughs> represent everyone in the church. Hey, so right. now, if Samuel says, "Well, I mean, I'm working, man. That's why I don't come have breakfast with you." I would say, don't worry, Samuel. Your pastor represented you. Amen. Amen. You see how, it, how Samuel, if Wesley said, well, then I would love to come down and have breakfast, but, you know, uh, where you live is too far, you know, I said, don't worry, Wesley. Your pastor came down and have breakfast with me. If David said, well, you know, but I would love to come down, but, you know, I have to go to work, you know, I got all the, I said, don't worry, David. Your pastor came down and have breakfast with me. If Paul said, but I mean, I'd love to come down with you, but you know, I gotta go to work. I said, your pastor Amen. came down and had breakfast with me. See, when you have a pastor, he covers you. Amen. You don't have to worry. Amen. That's how it is. Your pastor <laughs> come down. Philip, I know Philip for a long time. He come down. Kerry, come down. But I'm saying to you guys, you don't have to worry. I'm here to have fellowship Amen. with you with your pastor, you invite me to your home, I'll come, 
you don't invite me, like I said, that's okay because I'm here to give love. Amen. You don't have to give me love back. Amen. Because you know what I do? I give love. Amen. That's right. <laughs> that's what I do. I give love. Amen. You don't give it back to me, that's okay. Because I want to be in the habit of giving love. I give love. That's what we do. Amen. You understand that? Yep. Amen. So because I want you to be in the same habit to give love. You don't have to give it back to me. Give it to everybody. Amen. So that way, when you find yourself in the habit of giving love back, and then one day, you'll give it to me. But you don't have to say, I have to give what I have love back to. No, just give love. Because what is the Bible say? Love what? Love one? Love, love one another. And that way, they, they'll know you are my disciple. That's all we have to do. Just love one another. Good and bad. And that's what we need to do. If there's anybody that we need to love, you know who are, the, who are those people? People that believe the same thing as you believe. And the Bible said, love your enemy. Right. Are you getting this? If there's anyone that we need to love, is our own. Amen. And the Bible said, love your enemy. Amen. That's right. So that means we need to know, we need to get our priorities straight. The problem is people are not getting their priorities straight. They're, you know what they're loving? They're loving the world. They're not even loving their own brothers. Are you getting this? That's another virtue. They're loving the world. They're not even loving their own kind. That's why we have a problem. If we stop loving the world and we love our own kind, Things are going to change. Me, I love my own kind. You know my own, who's my own kind? People that believe the same thing that I believe. That's my own kind. But it is my own kind. You are my own kind. I left my children, I left my house in Boston, and I came down here with my wife to be with you all. That's the sacrifice that I made. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Now let's all stand. <clears throat> but Paul was saying, of course, something before we go. <laughs> we just say something like, make me more like you, Lord. Make me more like you. So Jeff, you need something? I've got a few things that came across my mind. Some of your kind wrote the paper. Jesus said, if you love those that people love you, what do you do that? Or if you can only be him that can give it back to you, you've done a great thing. God said, love those that hate you. Yeah, I did. People that have been in prison, I've heard of people in prison that love of God. They wonder why, why would you, why would you help me when I was so mean and cruel? And sometimes we're mean and cruel to our wives or to the neighbor, the man at the gas station. We, we're ambassadors. We're not dressed up with our top hat on and. But we're in rags. I'm still an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Amen. I gotta watch what I say. I gotta watch where I go. Amen. Where's I gotta watch truth. what I do. Where's your truth? I don't want to love his people <clears throat> like he loves his people, like he loves a wretch like me. Amen. Amen. And that's just <clears throat> just some words. Let's change that me. song to I want to love the way he wants me to love. How's that? Amen. I want to love the way he wants me to live. I want to give until, until Man.
your heart that's filled with your love and may Brought us a long way, Saints. Yeah. Brother Mike? Yes, brother. Can I make an announcement real quick? Yes. Um, somebody has gone in and messed with the knobs on the soundboard. I'd like to ask you, please, if you don't know what you're doing, please leave the soundboard alone. It takes, sometimes we come in here and spend hours trying to get all our levels set. Uh, we've been having trouble tonight trying to get everything set. Uh, we try to get it set and we try to leave it. So please, please, if you're in the church for any reason, or if you got children in here, make sure that they're not getting around that soundboard because it it, it makes it really difficult on everybody. Thank you. Okay. okay. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, buddy. I've, I've had the same problem in my church. I got past the tape and I just taped the little knob and I didn't have that problem no more. It's <laughs> set and done. Well, I trust that you were blessed tonight to be here. I was. Brother David, won't you dismiss us, my brother?